So well, in the meantime, you can tell us all about how to conduct a perfect team exercise. Exactly. And what I was doing um, while I looked down, as you saw me multitask there, is the first question I always get is, are there slides? And the answer is yes, I just posted them. Um, there's also a video and an entire post that goes with this. So if you want that now, I would, you, know, you can have it. There it is. I just posted it. There's also supposed to be a scheduled tweet going out, but I don't know if that worked or not. Uh, I am on Twitter. I'm George Chiez. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Grimcon, for doing this again uh, during this, you know, unprecedented times, as we call them. Um, really do appreciate giving back to the community, and it's just something I've always loved to do. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm George Chiez. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Scythe. I just started there a month ago, and I am loving it. Uh, that is the unicorn shirt, and this is supposed to be purple, but I have these lights up here that make you see me better, and it looks blue, but it is a purple shirt. Um, with, along with Bryson, who was just on here, uh, we started the C2 Matrix. Uh, fun how that started, just lunch at DerbyCon, talking about various things. He was doing a talk. I was releasing a two-day red team exercise in an adversary emulation class for SANS. I teach for them and Empire had just kind of gone end of life. Empire is supported today, but it kind of left everyone kind of like, all right, what do we do now? And started talking to a bunch of people. I like to talk, I'm pretty social. Um, so again, definitely talk to me, <laughs> write, write me, um, I'm very approachable. Hey, what uh, C2 do you use? What do you C2 do you use? And you mentioned Jeff McJunkin earlier. He's definitely someone that uh that i asked that question to as well and there were all of these different answers and that's kind of how this came out before that i did work at large financial for 10 years leading the offensive team so um really understand the whole vulnerability management thing earlier today i did a talk at uh sans webcast about this new windows dns vulnerability that's out there just to kind of bring and you know be completely factual about it obviously media will try to say it's super bad it is bad but why is it bad and really explain that in terms that everyone can understand so you can explain that to your senior management and explain why you have to reboot domain controllers um during the weekday i've also been part of the common vulnerability scoring system uh working group we released version 3.1 a few months ago actually almost a year ago now um wrote a framework, ISSA fellow, NSI technologist fellow, etc. So follow me on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn, and we can continue these conversations. So I have a ton of slides if you've ever taken a SANS course. Um, it's a fire hose effect. There's 50 slides and we have 30 minutes. Um, actually, we have 20 now. So um, hang on to your stuff. And here we go. Purple, how hard can it be? I asked my six-year-old daughter, how do you make purple? She says, daddy, that's easy. Why do you always ask me this question? Please just learn. You take red, you mix it with blue, and you make purple, right? Right. But of course, when we talk about red team and purple teaming, we are talking about teams. We're talking about an offensive team and a defensive team and then working together. And how does that happen? Well, uh, if you know Mike Tyson, uh, and how he talks, you will appreciate this meme. If not, it's okay, you can Google that later. So how we think it will go, we get the red team and blue team, we put them in the same uh, room, or we used to, and you know, thank you, uh, free art, and everyone's happy. But that's probably not how it goes, right? Um, especially when you have red and blue that have been adversarial to each other, you have this problem on your hands. So that's what we're going to talk about here. This original talk was given at the inaugural SANS Purple Team Summit. If you heard Bryson a little earlier, we were talking about purple teaming and it's kind of new, right? It's, I mean, fairly new, relatively new, like two, three years. So did this talk and the way that we did it in a large enterprise was bringing everyone together in person. Now, I appreciate we can't do that anymore, um, at least currently, and hopefully we can. So I've evolved this talk to talk about how we can do it in this new world we live in. So evolution of ethical hacking, how did we get here? 
This may be different from other organizations, um, but most of us started doing some sort of vulnerability scanning. You run some sort of scanner against a IP, against a web app. You then triage that. That's called vulnerability assessment. You might find something that you can exploit, in which case we'll call that penetration testing. And you provide that to your senior management saying, we have to fix this. This is the list of priorities. I mentioned I worked uh, with CDSS, which there would be a way that you can prioritize. I know, don't, don't hate me. Don't, don't write bad about CDSS. I mean, we tried. If you want to help out, they're open. They're looking at 4.0 right now, um, et cetera. But really, that was maybe 10 years ago right like we've kind of solved this problem vulnerabilities are not going away you all know that right you know to expect vulner patches to be released on the second tuesday of every month that microsoft's going to release a whole bunch of them that you're going to have to patch very quickly so where have we evolved from there and that is the moving from common vulnerability and exposures to tactics te techniques and procedures so it's common vulnerability exposures is CVE. It's from MITRE. And MITRE also has this new framework, newer framework called MITRE Attack. That's really getting to the red team side of it. And as you saw in Dave Mayer's talk, really emulating adversaries, understanding how they work, and go after the same objectives. Now, if you are a mature organization, if you understand security, yeah, and I'm not talking about like you're the most innovative, right? Most organizations today operate under the assumed breach, right? You know you are going to get compromised at some point. Someone's going to click on something, right? Someone will. You know they will. You can't get to zero. We've tried, right? So someone's going to fall for something. We don't know what that is. That's an infinite space, if you will. Or there's going to be a vulnerability and you're not gonna patch it before there's an exploit and someone takes advantage of it. So everything we've done in ethical hacking has been around providing business value. If you're not doing it for business value, you're doing it wrong. And yes, it's fun, I've been there. Hack all the things, get in, get your shells, tell the blue team they suck, right? Not cool, fun for you, not fun for everyone else. You know, work as a team. I think we're, we're at the point where we can work together and collaborate. And that's where the whole purple team concept came from. And it's not only about technology anymore. It's not only about patching a vulnerability. It's about people, process, and technology. So that's where we are. Can't do a talk on red team without defining red team. As I mentioned, I have all of these slides available to you. So there's going to be a ton of information I'm going to give you, but and very quickly, but you can reference it later. Definition test assumptions, emulate tactics, techniques, and procedures. Don't only test technology, test people, process, and technology. Very manual, you can't automate a red team, right? You, you hear that from some marketing vendors and whatnot, you, you can't emulate that, right? They're still thinking behind this. Um, but once you do get to doing various TTPs, you might be able to automate some of those. So we'll talk about that. Now there's internal red teams and external red teams. If you've followed uh, along throughout the day, awesome talks, Dave and I were talking about the differences because uh, Dave Mayer, who's now the um, red team director for Grimm doing this as an external red team, has a lot of experience in an internal red team yet as well. Um, so we were talking about this and there's many differences between them. The internal red team should be more of a sparring type partner. And the external red team, when you do that engagement that the blue team doesn't know about, the defenders don't know about, that brings value as well. I'm in no way saying to get rid of that. I'm just proposing a different way of doing it when you're not doing those yearly red team engagements. And that's through adversary emulation. Adversary emulation is learning and leveraging cyber threat intelligence. I know many of you hear that and you think, ah, buzzword. It's not. We're gonna learn about our attackers. We're gonna see how they operate. And then we get to emulate that against our organizations to bring them value. And you can do these in two ways. There was a great question earlier. Is adversary emulation the same as purple team? And the answer is no. You can do an adversary emulation as a red team engagement 
where the blue team doesn't know about it, or you can do as a purple team where the blue team does know. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So moving towards a purple team, and there you see the Scythe Unicorns that we all love, got the shirt, and uh, we'll hopefully get you all some swag if you come to our uh, unicorn event. So what's a purple team exercise? First of all, a purple team, with the exception of one person that I have sat down with, and they tell me they actually have a team that is devoted to doing purple teaming, it's mostly a virtual team, a functional team. It's where you get your red team, your offensive folks, you get your cyber threat intelligence folks, and you get your blue team or your defenders, and they all work together. So generally how it goes, just like an adversary emulation, you gain cyber threat intelligence, understand a threat actor that will most likely target you. If you're in healthcare, you have different threat actors to worry about than if you are in financial or if you are in a law firm. They're all different. So you probably want to do this for one that's likely to attack you. You have your red team create an adversary emulation plan. You tabletop this adversary emulation plan to figure out what you think you have some defenses against, right? And again, red teams test assumptions. Then you emulate each of these, but you emulate it while you show the blue team. So the red team at this point is showing the blue team how they would function, how the adversary functions. And then the blue team goes and finds these indicators of this malicious behavior and they show the red team. So it's not about, oh, the red team is just educating the blue team. No, you're educating each other. You are working together more efficiently to collaborate. So that's purple team. Um, you can do this in a variety of different ways. You can do it for a variety of goals. This slide is if you want to sell this in your organization, there's a whole bunch of different reasons why you want to do it. And eventually you want to operationalize. You need sponsors. So you do need to show your senior management that this brings value. And it's tough to do it when you haven't actually done an adversary emulation already, or you haven't done a purple team. So you might have to start with a low budget. If only there was a talk that was given at a conference about doing a low budget adversary emulation. That's right, we just saw one, right, from Dave Mayer. So you might actually not have to spend too much money here, but you do have to take people out of their day to day. So that is still a cost to your organization, which means you need to get buy-in from the SOC manager, right? And they work the schedule, they have everyone working different hours. You have to get them out so that you can at least do this maybe for a couple hours during the day, maybe an entire day, et cetera. You need your cyber threat intelligence folks to weigh in, you need your red team. If you have a hunt team, if you have incident response, all of these folks need to be brought in and more importantly, their senior managers have to be brought in. Time requirements really depends how long you want to do this. For the first one, just go with a day. That way it's not that big of an investment. You can start proving how well this will work for your organization. Preparation is tremendous. Just like a red team engagement, you saw Dave's talk, right? A lot of it was setting up email servers, setting up C2s, purchasing domains. That same preparation will occur here. Then you have the exercise, maybe a day, maybe a few hours, and then you have your action items, which I don't know how long they're gonna take. We've had action items that have taken over a year to resolve. It's a large organization, and there were some interesting cases which we will not talk about. Roles and responsibilities, generally your CISO or someone that is in charge of security, your managers, your CTI analysts, your participants, and then in the bottom here, you have the exercise coordinator. You definitely want an exercise coordinator. At first, maybe you can run this, but you really want someone that's good at project management, that can bring everyone together, and that is not part of one of the teams. Especially if it's new, the red team and the blue team might not get along, so you probably want someone neutral there to bring everyone together. Frameworks, there's many of them. Cyber Kill Chain from Lockheed Martin showed everyone how attackers work. Paul Poles did this awesome paper for a university called Unified Cyber Kill Chain. If you're on the financial space, there's a ton of regulation around this now, not in the US yet, but if you are in any other country, 
Bank of England, European Central Bank, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, there's, they're all public. Um, what we did is we wrote another one that would cover all of these. But really, the main testing framework is MITRE ATT&CK. Over on the right here, you see what we do. We gain, we grab cyber threat intelligence, we plan, we then do the test, and then exercise closure. Mandatory uh, MITRE ATT&CK um, slide. So you've all seen this. Now with sub-techniques, right? Released last week by MITRE ATT&CK. Thank you to the attack team. We had Jamie Williams on. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, everyone uh, that works there all the way up to, um, to Richard and uh, John and all of you. Thank you for everything you do. Awesome framework. Threat intelligence, David Bianco, Pyramid of Pain. I'm sure you've heard this. What we want to focus on is the TTPs, the tactics, the techniques, and procedures. Everything else is important, but is easier to identify. Tools. I love tools. We created the C2 matrix. It's all about tools. And yet we still don't want to focus so much on tools. You should be able to catch a bad tool or a tool that's running in your environment, but really the behaviors are the toughest thing to catch and the toughest thing that the adversaries can change. So if you flip this um, pyramid of pain, which was created for blue teams, it's also a pyramid of pain for the red team. If you're offensive, your behaviors are the hardest thing for you to change. Your tools you can change. There's a C2 matrix that can let you pick another tool, right? You can change your domains, your IP addresses, your hashes. You can change a bit on any of your payloads and you change that, right? So it's also a pyramid of pain for the red team. Um, grabbing cyber threat intelligence is hard. Uh, not many of you like to do this. This is something that we teach in our two-day red team course because it is important. We have to leverage uh, this in um, our adversary emulations. Attack Navigator really makes it easy for you. Um, this is a screenshot of sub techniques. So you can see those for a particular adversary. This is kind of your little plan of what to do. We have Threat Thursday. So at Scythe, just like Grimm, we believe in giving back to the community. So every Thursday, we introduce an adversary we pull cyber threat intelligence, we map it to MITRE ATT&CK, we present an adversary emulation plan, we share that plan for anyone that uses Scythe and wants to import it, then we actually emulate the adversary and we talk about how to defend it. In this case, we're gonna talk about APT33. You hear them up here on the top right, because I blame everything that has occurred in 2020 to the assassination a Soleimani. It started January 2nd. It must have been the trigger, right? Uh, I kid. Obviously, I don't blame anything on anything that's happening. Um, but there was an Iranian military officer that was assassinated. And the number one question that we got from CISOs was, what can Iranian threat actors do? Well, this APT-33 will answer that question. So you need to plan, you need to choose your TTPs, and it's all about the TTPs. You see right there, one does not simply select TTPs. Planning is super important. You want, don't want to emulate in your purple team exercise a TTP that is not gonna be cut, right? If it's not gonna be blocked, it's not gonna be logged, you're just going to go to town with it. How much value are you really bringing? Instead, why don't you use TTPs that maybe log on a local system and maybe are getting into a central log aggregator but aren't alerting, right? Something like running Who Am I or running a command line script or running PowerShell. That obviously occurs in your environment, but you're not going to get an alert or your SOC isn't going to get an alert every time you do that. That way you create what we call an attack chain. And that attack chain should map back to an adversary, in which case you then emulate it and you improve your security. So tabletop this. Tabletop exercises are great for senior management. Do this to get and figure out which TTPs you want to run. So here's a very simple table just so that you can actually do this right after this talk or maybe next week when you plan this out. Pick a procedure, pick a technique, pick a, pick a tactic, right? Command and control, 
through a standard port or an application because they now have sub techniques. So everything I did to memorize MITRE ATT&CK is now gone. Um, so a common port is no longer something, but HTTP or a common application is. You want to see if you can detect that. The SOC thinks that you can. The hunt team says, yeah, if we pull memory, maybe we can see that this connection was established. Or, I'm um, sorry, that, that would be for the, the incident response team. So tabletop this with managers. Then choose various tools you want to do. So obviously C2 matrix uh, is near and dear to the heart. We will be presenting this at Black Hat Arsenal in a few weeks. So um, Black Hat Arsenal is going to be available for everyone for free. So do come out during that one hour period. Um, I believe it's going to be on Wednesday. I don't have that yet, but um, it's on the Black Hat site. Come out, we'll spend way more time talking about this. But very quickly, a whole bunch of tools, right? I think other uh, speakers mentioned them. Pick a tool, pick what TTPs you're going to do, and start working with those. And create your adversary emulation plan. Jamie Williams was on, awesome person. You all saw um, his talk. Hopefully, you did. If you didn't catch the recording, this is from them. This is APT3. They now have APT29 and they um, are doing Carbonet. So, grab a plan. What I did is far simpler because I think you can probably do this as well. You take APT33, you create a threat profile of them, the description, the objective and then map it to MITRE ATT&CK. What did they use for command and control? What did they do for initial access, for execution, for defense evasion, et cetera? And you now have a plan. So when you propose this, you're not just going in and being like, hey, we're gonna hack the network, we're gonna be Iranians, and we're gonna get in and do all this. You actually have a plan that says what you're going to execute. It really makes it a lot easier to understand. Logistics. Pick a location. Unfortunately, we can't right now, but maybe in the future we can pick a location. If you're going to do a virtual, choose a platform. Zoom, go to meeting, whatever you're allowed. If it's a physical location, generally the SOCs are a good place to travel to, obtain uh, travel approval, plan to arrive the day before, gain a training room or a large conference room. If the conference room is for 12 people, you can't actually just fit 12 people in there because everyone's bringing their laptops. Um, and they're gonna, you know, it's gonna get hot, et cetera. So think about all that and make sure that every attendee can share their output. This is going to be collaboration. It's not going to be about one person just doing everything. Everyone is going to participate. This is a hands-on keyboard exercise. You're gonna need target systems. I'm going to speed up like you have no idea. Gain target systems, make sure that they're in production so that you can actually emulate and have the same security tools. That means get endpoints that are on the target sys are, are in the environment, Windows 10, right? Windows 8, hopefully not Windows 7 because that's end of life, you need to get rid of those. Servers, VDI, et cetera. And then make sure they have all the security tools, right? Your EDRs, your forensics tools, et cetera. Create target accounts in production. Don't use other people's real accounts. Have a you know separation there. Um, create new accounts. Make sure that they can have email access, internet access, etc. Build the attack infrastructure. Dave literally covered all of this, so I'm going to skip it. Red Team Prep have set up these laptops. Make sure that they have access to attack infrastructure and go through just like you would in a real uh, test or. or a zero knowledge test. You also have Vector, and Vector is an awesome tool. I just did a one hour long presentation with the folks there. Um, definitely catch that. It's great for tracking red and purple team exercises and showing value. Make sure the SOC is prepared as well, that they can share what they're seeing with everyone. Um, make sure that they have allowed the C2 channels, the domains, etc. Make sure the incident response team is prepared. They probably need to create a case where they will be able to pull memory from a target system and be able to do their forensics. They might have to do it live, right? Things like Sysmon will definitely help. And then we get to a point where we do our exercise. Now the exercise flow um, generally starts with 
someone briefing you saying this is what we're going to do this is the threat actor then the red team presents this is the ttp we're going to do or the chain we're going to do right we're going to execute this powershell on the endpoint it's going to establish a command and control out to this system that's actually a number of ttps even though it's just one execution so show the tool you're going to use we're going to do this with empire or posh or whatever c2 you chose this person's going to click on it and then have the um have a discussion what do you think will catch this well if it's a powershell executable and and loads powershell.exe we should probably be able to catch that not many people run powershell.exe or if it's establishing a c2 connection that calls out every five seconds that's not like normal http but hey then the answer response team will say yeah we can catch that because we're going to see that established connection great red team executes that they share their screen the blue team learns then step four the sock and hunt team see this and they go and find this adversary behavior they show everything that they do and um hopefully the red team learned something here too shout out to mauricio velasco he did an awesome talk at uh derbycon called i simulate therefore i catch um he will also be presenting at black hat arsenal with a tool called purple sharp and he has this measured detection maturity if you ran a ttp and the blue team didn't catch anything no events were generated they get zero points if logs were generated locally say your endpoints caught something you get some points if that was logged and sent to a central aggregator excellent you get two points if that was actually triggered anywhere if an alert triggered great and then if an actual response started right a process started because of this trigger that's four points excellent you can now start measuring this and showing how you improve so this is an example of vector doing exactly um, the same thing you fill out the left in this case you disabled anti-malware pretty easy test case right what happens when antivirus gets turned off in your target environment i would hope there's some sort of detection right was it alerted what was expected alert etc and then if it was identified have the blue team show the red team like i said it's not only about the red team teaching you schooling you that's not the case it's collaboration now the blue team is teaching i don't know that much about sysmon but what did i do i reached out to olaf and said olaf show me how this works and he showed me his tool he showed me sysmon and now i learned right at the same time i said hey olaf did you know you can emulate this ransomware check this out right so it's that collaboration right it's, you can do it inside your organization you can do it within the industry and everyone if you just talk and be human does it does work out it's amazing so document everything that worked if you can do any short-term tweaks for example oh this this particular log we should definitely learn on let's turn it on then you can retest it now the thing with the red team here retesting the same thing over and over with some of these tools is that it's not consistent so be careful with that you want to be consistent as you go through repeat this over and over and you have an awesome purple team exercise then you close this up you have your exercise coordinator there taking notes this is why i said it shouldn't be a red team it shouldn't be someone on the blue team you should have a project manager there doing that there's going to be a lot of moving parts have them take notes minutes action items and feedback then send an email to your senior management send an exciting email we just had the best day ever we didn't think that we would get this particular ttp caught but we actually did and it only took 30 seconds from the time that the ttp ran to the time it showed up on our security operations center's dashboard awesome great sell what you're doing so that you can continue to do it and then of course you're going to have your action items well unfortunately these other things were not discovered so we're going to work on that and then follow up every exercise will have its lessons learned and keep your sponsors happy show them how this collaboration worked and you can do this at any time you can do it before a red team engagement after the red team engagement red teams often have to do this in what we call red team reveal or a red team replay or sometimes they even have to do an entire purple team exercise so work with them 
the whole point is to work together. I do the whole sparring partner analogy where if you see a boxer or UFC, right? Uh, no, we got that back. So in UFC, what do they do? They train together. But does anyone ever knock anyone out when they are training? No, they work when one gets good in offense, the other one gets good in defense, and you go back and forth, and that is what you want to build and operationalize here. So with that said, we have another awesome event coming up called the UniCon. It's a unicorn event. It's with Site. It's August 20th. Save the date. You can actually register for it right now. We have two awesome keynote speakers, Olaf talking about blue team stuff, and John Strand talking about red team stuff. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing a talk. Adam's going to be there. And we're going to show you some things that we're doing, some work, things we're working on to build an ecosystem where security researchers, both from offense and defense, can work together to not only find new TTPs, but figure out how to emulate them consistently and figure out how to defend against them as well. I'm very excited for that. I hope to see you there and I appreciate your time. Uh, I know this was a ton of stuff, but like I said, there's a video, there's a write up there, the slides, you have it all for you. And that is how you do 46 slides in 30 minutes or less. Woo! All right, what do we got? Do we got questions? Yeah, I saw at least one question come in and it was from Grayson and he was asking about how, okay, so this is great. And uh, the challenge with cybersecurity is that a lot of these ideas are, work really well for a large enterprise that has a large budget. And as you start to move down the stack of budget, um, it gets difficult because it's not even a question of money. It can be a question of uh, resource or in the case of where you have an MSSP, the contractual terms might limit on what you can do that that is spot on um and many people call me out for that as well um i worked 10 years for a very large and very well financed uh bank so even when i would teach people would call this out so i am learning a lot about how you can do this on budget so that's one of the reasons why i love uh dave's talk as well and what we're seeing as well is that the blue teamer and it has to play both roles, right? Um, you've seen a lot of talk about these detection engineers um, and working together. So one of the things we've been trying to do is really lower that barrier to entry, not just for the community, like for the community, obviously, but also at your organizations because we all need to work together. So how do we do that? Well, we give you tools that are easy to install, that you can easily emulate something that you're maybe spending five, 10 minutes max doing the red team side so that you can continue doing your BAU, your business as usual on the blue team side. So I think that's, that's important. And that actually also gets red team. So I don't want red team or saying, oh, you're gonna take my job because that's definitely not the case. Instead of the red team repeating the same thing over and over, the red team can focus on newer things, finding them before the bad guys do, bringing them back into this ecosystem, showing how to defend against it. And that way we all improve as a community and also in offense and defense based on whatever you want to specialize. In. I'm checking here. So the, yeah, I know awesome really presentation, got a purple team coming up. So this has been great. Awesome. Good luck with that. Let us know if you need any help. Um, one of the things that I'm doing now with uh, Scythe is consulting services. So we do build a tool that is excellent for purple teaming. But if you don't have a red team, you've never done this before, right? You saw this you know, 30 minute presentation, but you want someone there to walk you through, maybe talk to your senior managers, explain to them the value here, let us know. Um, we're there, my contact information is here. Um, we're doing this service, um, not only for, for the community, but for everyone to get better. We, we really need to all get better, both defense and offense as, as we continue to mature. Are you going to be over on Discord for people to ask questions?
yes, I'm on Discord now. I posted the link. Too many screens, no worries. Yeah, register. It's a free event. Awesome speakers, just like Grim, just like Grimcon. Um, thank you again. Um, what do we have coming up? I I I looked next, at the schedule all day. Yeah, next up what is the uh instead of a closing keynote, we have three CISOs uh joining us on a panel discussion because of course we're all here talking in the trenches about different levels of technical execution and people and how to manage yourselves and process and we're bringing in the folks from the top to uh just pick their brains on what's going on in their world and what they're thinking that's awesome i th think that's very important like uh at some point i said that red teams we kind of lost sight of that and, and it's weird because i also lived through it like i we did vulnerability assessment we did pen testing and at some point like jake williams says we went full cyber where we just owned everything and left the report and went back to owning everything like we we lost that view right and i'm gonna mean everyone but i speak for myself and and for others in the community i think we we, we did that and, and we're trying to bring this back so um so yeah purple team uh, look at that look who joined hey george how you doing how's it going it's going it's been a great day it has been a awesome day yeah, the, the new speaker's uh, track was uh, was rocking it today, having all kinds of fun. Oh, look, there's Matt. Yeah, it was great. It's been a good day. That's awesome. You want me to give a presenter back to someone? Uh, I'll, I'll just take it. You're good. As soon as I can get my, uh, there we go.